Here's a solution video for lab six. I've already got my R Markdown document set up here and I've knitted it to make sure that it's working. Basically, we have one problem for this set. Uh, that's it, it's worth six points. The problem is to write a function that conducts a randomization test for the mean difference between two groups and show that it works. Specifically, use your function um, to conduct a uh, a randomization test on the same data we used in the example from the lab um, and report the results and briefly discuss what the results of the randomization tell you. And we can also do a few extra things and we've got some guidance on what inputs we should have to our function and what we want to have the function output. So we're going to input a vector of numbers for group one means and a vector of numbers for group two means and um, we can include a, an input to allow us to determine how many permutations or resamplings of the data to create. We want to outgroup, uh, output each group mean and the difference between the group means. This is the observed uh, means and differences that we find in the data. We want to output a histogram of the sampling distribution of the possible mean differences produced by the randomization process. And we want to output the probability or odds of obtaining the observed mean difference that we found. And we've got a few optional things here. So for now, I'm just going to do uh, this as yeah, to show you an example of doing it. Um, and let's proceed. So the first thing maybe, um, well, We're going to make a function and it's going to be called randomization test. So this is how I'm going to start out doing it. We haven't made this function yet. I'm going to say a few brief things about functions before I head out and do this. Uh, we've, we know that if we use the question mark and the name of a function, so for example, the t.test, uh, we haven't talked about this function. We'll talk about it in another lab. And, but if you do this, you can go and read the help file for the t-test function. I'm, I'm just bringing this up because um, what we're going to do is write a function that works, but we're not going to go the entire distance to write a function that could be reused in the context of an R package. For example, uh, whoever wrote the t-test function also wrote this documentation for the t-test function and they put it inside of an R package called stats. And um, in that, uh, using that way of doing things, it, it allows us to use the t-test function whenever we want, just by calling it like this. When we write this randomization test function, it will be available effectively inside of this R code chunk. Um, and you would have to load it into your environment in order to use it every time you want to use it. Uh, as we move towards the end of the semester, probably towards the end of uh, Stats Lab 2, which we'll be doing next semester, we'll start discussing uh, more ways we can write functions, including how to put them into an R package and generate this kind of documentation. But for now, let's just focus on writing the function. Um, there's a couple different ways we can do this. I like to think about the inputs and the body kind of separately. So I'm going to say A, B, and resamples. Now, uh, A refers to the, the vector of means for group A, and B ref refers to the vector of means for group B, and resamples is going to be the number of times that we resample. And I'm going to set a default here of 1000, let's say. Actually, I'm going to set it to 100 just so I can test the function later. And another thing we can do is go ahead and borrow a bunch of the code that was written in lab six. So let me quickly do that. We've jumped over to lab six and let's scroll down to the randomization test with real data. Now what I'm doing is I'm suggesting 
that we could probably copy some of this code here and use it in our new function. So I'm going to copy this code right here and think about how I might reuse it. Well, actually, we need this too for the plot. And I'm going to pop that in here. OK, so I know that when I do a randomization test, I'm going to need some values from group A and from group B. Um, so let's just, I'm just going to pretend that I have some just to kind of get started. And here's some different ones. All right. Now, um, what, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm simply allowing myself to do some tests as I go along the way. Okay, well, actually, let, let's, um, I'm going to give these different values. For example, um, I'm going to call this group one. Let's say that was the name of variable for, that you'd come up with. So it's going to be different. Any, anybody could come up with different names for these things. So we've got group one and group two. And here's the idea. When I run my function, what I'd like to do is say, okay, well, group A is I'm going to assign it the values in group one and group and for B, I'm going to assign it the values in group two and I'm going to do a hundred resamples. So right now, if I run this part, I create a function here. This means I can do something so I can do that. However, nothing happens. We, we return null. That's because we haven't uh, written the function in here yet. Now, what I want to do first is create um, a variable that contains all of the means. Now what I'm doing is uh, using these these labels. So I'm uh, let's let's just check out what happens here. We can use the return function to return information from our function. So now, when we run the randomization test function, um, oop, there's an error. That's because I've created this variable. And I want you to notice something. Um, this variable, all underscore means, I made a mistake here. That's supposed to be the S. So now when I run the function, what I'm returning, notice, is the combined values in the variable A and B. Uh, let me clear the workspace. I want to be very clear about something here. I run this, I run this. So I've got two variables in the workspace, group one and group two. Now I'm going to load the function by running it. And the function appears here. Now I'm going to uh, actually use the function just like this. And I'm just spacing things out uh, so we can see clearly what's going on. I've assigned group one to A input, group two to B input, and 100 to the resamples input. And I run the function. And the output is these values. Because that's what the function does. Um, Inside the function, uh, all of the things that happen in here, they remain inside the function in some sense. They, uh, for example, we don't see all means appearing in the list of variables. Neither do we see the variables A or B appearing here. These are all internal to the function. We're putting group one into A, group two 
into b and then inside the function we're uh, using the variables that we've created a b and resamples to do everything All right so i'm going to now think about the process that i want to do in terms of resampling but i i realize that i've kind of gotten ahead of myself for example the first thing that we wanted to do let's let's make some goals calculate actual means okay so the first thing i want to do is calculate the group a mean and that would just be the mean of a i also want to calculate the group b mean and that would be the mean of p and i want to calculate the difference the mean difference and that's going to be group a a mean minus group b mean right um okay this is part of the thing we're asked to do output each group mean and the difference between the group means so these are some things we need to do now i can re re uh, compile the function and run the function but notice i'm not seeing the group means or the mean difference because i'm only returning this one thing called all means seeing as we're going to be returning many different kinds of things um, i'm going to create a variable called test output and i'm going to make it a list we're going to add to it um, i'm going to call the so in a list we can include lots of different kinds of r objects so right now i'm going to include these single mean values and uh, that's the mean difference so let's see what happens here instead of returning all means i'm going to return the test output that we just created in here. So let's take a look at what we get out. And now we're getting uh, the mean for A, the mean for B, and the difference between them. So that's great. If we wanted to, so let's, let's uh, keep going from here. So we've calculated the actual means and the mean difference. We want to conduct the randomization so to do that, we put all of the values in A and B into the all means variable here. This is just a way of putting all the numbers into one sequence. And I'm gonna go down and copy some of this code here that we used from before. So let's just copy this in and see what we need to modify. And I've got a variable here called mean differences that we're storing the um, shuffled or randomization or new differences that we find every time. I find this word to or this variable name to be quite similar to this one here. And I'm going to call it simulated differences instead. Or, you know what? Let's call it possible differences. I don't know. You get to choose. But I want it to be descriptive, and I want it to be uh, distinct from some of the other choices I've made. All right. So it, here is where we get to do a loop where we're going to reshuffle the data many times over. Currently, we're going to do this 10,000 times. However, I want to do it the number of times that is listed here. That is the number of resamples. Whatever value is in the resamples input, I want to use that here. And what I want to do is shuffle the values in this variable called all means. 
and um, I want to then calculate the new A mean and the new B mean. I'm going to change that over here, new A mean minus new B mean. And um, in order to do that, we need to use the appropriate values here. Because remember, resample, what it's going to do, or sorry, th this, this is going to shuffle all the values in all means. And we need to know uh, how many people there are in group A and how many people there are in group B. And take, let's say there's, uh, well, right here, there's uh, one, two, there's five in each. So we'd, it'd be something like this. 1 to 5, and 6 to 10. But uh, what if we inputted values where there was 7 and 8 or some other thing? So we need to kind of calculate these things for ourselves. For example, the first 1 to x values will be 1 to the length of a. And then here, this would be the length of a plus 1. So if a was the length of a was 5, well, length of a plus 1 would be 6. And then this could be the total length of a plus length of b. Or how about even make it more simple? <laughs> the length of all means. And I'm just going to add some parentheses in here to make sure that this doesn't go awry. And at this point, we, I think, should be generating our resamples uh, every time calculating the new A and B means appropriately and also generating the possible mean difference that we got each time. Now, we want to create a plot. Um, well, let's let's actually think about an, a few other things that we could return. So, first of all, if we wanted to return uh, well, let's, let's just call it randomization. Let's, let's uh, try all of this. Now what we're seeing is we've got the, the means, the difference, and randomization contains uh, every single simulated mean difference that we computed. We've been asked to plot this. So we can actually, I'm just going to copy that like that delete all this stuff that we've been using. We can actually create a function to produce a histogram just like this. We know this one makes a histogram. And I'm not sure if I've demonstrated this before, but we can put some histogram into a variable and store it as a variable. And in this case, we want to do a histogram of possible differences. And if we want to um, display a red line, we could do that. Uh, that would be the calculated mean difference. One thing to note is when we run this function, we will have to make sure that we use ggplot because this is a ggplot function. We could load the library ggplot, but I'm just going to do it like this. Um, where is this? What's it called? ggplot2, yeah. So for example, uh, if you write ggplot2, which is the name of the package that has ggplot functions, and you do two colons, you can then access the functions inside the package. And we were going to use qplot here which is one of the functions. 
and this allows you to use a function inside a package without loading the package as a library. And we sometimes use this inside of a function. So let's try this out and see what happens. I'm, I'm going to uh, add the variable, the plot, into my list of things. And let's see if, if it shows us a plot. All right, it didn't work. And I'm gonna see if I can figure out why. Briefly, the reason it didn't work was because qplot is not the only function from ggplot2 that we need. All of these ones are also ggplot2 functions. So we have to be a little bit more explicit here and add this ggplot2 colon colon thing in front of each of them. Let's try that. All right, so now we're returning all of these values as well as a histogram of simulated possible mean differences. So we're getting pretty close here. Uh, we should check that the number of resamples is working. So if we, um, oh sorry, we set the default as 100. When I run this function, I could increase the number of samples to 1,000, and then we'll increase the um, number of the, the frequency counts here. So we're getting pretty close to finishing our function. Um, let's check. We've outputted each group mean and the difference between the group means. We've outputted a histogram of the sampling distribution of the possible mean differences produced by the randomization process, but we have not outputted the probability or odds of obtaining the observed mean difference or larger. So let's do that uh, at the very end. Let's make a variable called probability. And what we want to do is figure out uh, how many, well, let me, let me just first possible differences here. We're going to use logical indexing to see how many of the possible differences are greater than or equal to the mean difference that we observed, which is right here. All right. Now what we want to do here is get the length of this, which is going to say how many uh, it's going to count all the examples up. We want to divide by the total number of differences that we sampled from, which is the value in resamples. And we could also call this the probability value, or let's call it the p value. Oops, uh, we don't, I didn't mean to run this. I accidentally did, it's inside of our function. So we should be able to add it here. And let's run, re, reload the function and run it. And we're calculating a probability value now, which is the basically the proportion of times that we observed a mean difference in our simulation that was larger than the mean difference in the data. Okay, so the last part of the question is simply to use your function on some of the existing data. So what I would do, let's see, I'll just go down here, open up a, a new R code chunk, and I would flip back over to the lab I would say, yeah, we're going to go and get the data here. And I've got the open data folder just like that. So I've loaded in the data. What I need to do now is get all of the means for group zero and all of the means for group one. And there's 
a few different ways we could do that. We could say, let's say, let's get group zero. Well, uh, have we, I'm not sure if I've loaded dplyr yet, but I'm going to right now. Remember the data looks like this. It's a big table here. And so, first of all, what I want to do is filter the condition column so that it equals zero. And then I want to select the, is it intellect rating condition? Or that, sorry, the intellect rating column. So that didn't work. Oh, I need to load dplyr. Let's do this. So I've got 3.3312, 1.6, and so on. So that should correspond to, okay, so just looking, number four is a zero. So I go over to intellect rating. I should get a 4.33, and that's the first one. And zero, there's three more in a row. So it's 4.33, two, three, and so on. And I'm pretty sure that's, whoops. That's what, uh, uh, it's not exactly right. Sorry, intellect rating. 3.33, then 1, 2, 1.66. 3.32, 1, 2, and then 1.66. There must be a 1, 0. Yeah. All right. So we've successfully retrieved all of the means from group zero and put them into a single variable here. And this one, there it is. Let's get the ones for group one. And let's just look at if we can group zero. Oops, misspelled it group zero okay this is a funny little thing that we've done here we've selected the column and it's uh, still a data frame so it's not a vector the way we wrote this function was that it's expecting a vector so we can see that group zero has a bunch of numbers but it's it's sort of, a, let's check it out. The class of group zero is a data frame. So I'm going to do one more thing. This is an interesting way to do it. I'm gonna add a pipe at the end. I'm gonna say as.numeric. Now, does that work? No, it doesn't like that, okay. And how about, okay, we've got group zero, we've got the same problem. I guess we could do it this way. I'm not sure why it didn't work the other way. As dot, ah, right. Here's, here's the issue. Sort of a funny one. Group zero, dollar sign, intellect rating. This is actually a vector, this whole thing. So if, We've beta made a data frame with one column, and we have to refer to its column name in order to access the vector part. And uh, so this is how I'm going to do it. We'll do it again for group one. So if we run all of these things, we should have a group zero with a bunch of means and a group one with a bunch of means. And that means that I can take my randomization function that I just made, go down here and say group one, or actually what will be group A? Let's, let's call it group zero, whatever. And, group, and B will be group one. And we want to do the test a thousand times. We could run this and we've now just done the randomization test. And notice because of the way we're doing our subtraction, we found a group difference of negative two because it's 
doing this group mean minus that group mean. If you wanted to do it the other way, you could change this around and you'd get your group difference out here. And so this looks like what we got in the lab. Now, uh, that's all for now. It's up to you to form your opinions about what you've learned to answer the question. Um, that is to report the results and briefly discuss what the results mean. And uh, see you next week for Lab 7.